Hello everyone, Professor Berninger here. Uh, I want to talk to you today about my Kinsman Major Molyneux. So Nathaniel Hawthorne is not uh, an easy writer to read, but I think he's well, well worth the work. Uh, and as time has gone on, uh, my appreciation for him uh, has grown. And I hope yours moves along as well. Uh, today's story, my Kinsman uh, Major Molyneux, uh, has, I see it as having three sort of main themes. And I'm, let me lay those themes out now. And then we'll dive into some details. We'll talk about the first paragraph because, hey, I told you to keep an eye on the first paragraph. So one theme is about growing up. Guess what? Uh, we're all in the process of doing that. Of course, uh, Robin is at a pivotal moment in his uh, maturation, his growing up. So growing up and what Robin gains in this story is a sort of uh, a midnight knowledge. Um, he goes from innocence uh, this sort of uh, naive youth to experience uh, when he sees his first cousin once removed. That is his relationship to the Major. Major Molyneux's father, Robin's grandfather, were brothers. So Robin is a first cousin once removed. Anyway, um, so Robin goes from innocence to experience, you know, country, country bumpkin uh, in the big city. Uh, and naivete uh, to a certain amount of wisdom. And what is going to happen after? Now, this is something Hawthorne's very interested in. We talked about it last semester, those of you who are with me in the first half of American literature. Um, what happens after you lose your innocence, your, you grow in wisdom? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about where I think Robin is headed after this story. You know, that might make a good paper topic, those of you creative writers in the room. Um, you might want to write four more pages of My Kinsman Major Molyneux. What happens to Robin after he sees his cousin tarred and feathered? Uh, it's also a second theme, and these are all related, of course, perception and self-deception. Uh, Robin, as a reader of people, of people as texts. He reads them as he thinks they should be, not as they are. So he, you know, the innkeeper, um, Robin thinks the innkeeper is treating him with great respect because, of course, he bears some resemblance to Major Molyneux, um, the appointed authority in town. Um, however, He's treating him that way because he wants his business, right? He wants his business. It's nothing wrong with that. And when the innkeeper realizes Robin doesn't really have any money uh, to stay there or enough to stay there, he, he makes fun of him and, 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 and says, hey, you look like this escaped indentured servant. Uh, it's a indentured servant, not an African-American enslaved. Not that. It's an indentured servant. Uh, you know, there's a bounty out for you. And of course, he's just playing with this with this kid. So Robin misreads throughout the story. The prostitute, yes, did you catch that? Um, he thinks the prostitute is his cousin's Major Molyneux's uh, housekeeper, but it's a prostitute, again, looking for business. And uh, he almost, the story almost got even more interesting uh, had uh, the watchman not come along and, and broken up the spell that uh, saucy eyes uh, the prostitute was casting over young Robin. Uh, and a third theme, the story of America, right? This is a story of America growing up as well as a boy growing up. And the message here, you're not going to make it based on your name, based on who you're related to. You're going to make it with your own shrewdness. Robin is a lad with gifts. Um, he's got a good mind. Um, he, he's, he's, he perceives things as best he can, um, even though he's a little off for most of the story. Um, but in America, you're going to make it on your own. Robin shows up in this uh, city. I think it's Boston. We don't know for sure. Maybe Salem. Robin shows up thinking, oh, I'm going to be a big shot because my I'm related to Major Molyneux. Well, that's very un-American, right? That's very British. That's very, I am born to royalty. I am born upper class. Um, Hawthorne here is championing 
making your own way, which is a very traditional American uh, value. Um, and, you know, whether that's true or not, we'll have to discuss that in other stories. Um, I do think there's a lot of opportunity in America. You guys are attending a community college, reasonably priced higher education. Why? To move up, not based on who you are, but based on hard work, based on gaining knowledge. So I think there's still a lot of opportunity in this country. There always has been uh, for people to move up. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy to move up socially and economically, um, but I think it can, it can be done. So those are the three uh, big themes, some conflicts in the story, city versus country, experience versus youth, rebellion, right, versus England, loyalty, uh, chaos versus order, and sort of a, a Christianity versus city of drinking and prostitution. And in the country, Robin's father's a minister, right, and a minister. So just one final note uh, before we uh, dig into the first paragraph. Uh, Robin is sort of in a strange land when he's in this city and he misperceives things. But all the people in the city here, if they were out in the country, out in the woods, they'd probably be misperceiving things uh, on foreign turf uh, to them. Setting of the story. So clearly it's in New England, almost most of Hawthorne's stories are there. And he's, this boy's gone from probably the Massachusetts uh, countryside uh, into Salem or Boston, or some small city. Other part of the setting, setting is time and place. I just gave you the place. Time, 1732. Early resistance. That's when colonists started fighting and resisting, leading to the American Revolution in the 1770s. So the story is set in 1732. Nathaniel Hawthorne is writing this in 1832. Now both those dates are important. You've got to pay attention. Are you paying attention out there? The setting and when something is written. So what we're reading here in the year 2021 by chance, um, what we're reading here is historical fiction. It's written by someone in 1832, it's set in 1732. If you all wrote something this year in 2021 and you set it in 1920, that would be historical fiction. And historical fiction often says as much about the time period in which it's being written as it does the time period it's being set. In 1830s America, where Hawthorne is alive and reading newspapers and talking to people, a lot of people, a lot of smart, informed people. Um, he's sort of taking in a lot of a lot of energy of the common man because Andrew Jackson is president. Andrew Jackson is the first sort of person who was raised poor to become president, uh, and also he engaged a lot of more, many more people in the democratic uh, process. Jackson has his flaws, uh, but he he was a, a populist, a person of the people, uh, at least white people and he certainly engaged them and got more people voting and, uh, than uh, ever. And that, you know, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So there we have some themes, conflicts, um, all very important and all frankly very relevant to you. Any of you interested in growing up? Any of you, have you grown up, right? How do you deal with learning about the ways of the world um, if you've been raised in a little sheltered environment, which most of us have been? Um, you don't want to become bitter and angry, right? You don't want to ignore it and just go shopping all the time. You want to grow wise, and uh, I think Robin's on that path, but we'll get, we'll get more to that. So let's take a look at the all-important first paragraph of Nathaniel Hawthorne's. My kinsman, Major Molyneux. And you know, folks, uh, this is not an easy story. If you read it and you were confused, good for you. You read it, you persisted through it. Um, when I took short stories at Columbia Green in 1989, we covered this story. And when I read it, I don't, I don't think I had much of a clue as to what was going on, but I read it, I came to class, I learned, and then when I went to teach it many years later, 
I looked up literary criticism about it. I took things I knew about Nathaniel Hawthorne. I've also been to Hawthorne's, a couple of houses he lived in uh, and read a full length biography. So it takes a long time. Don't sit out there thinking, how does Berninger know all this stuff? I missed it. Berninger missed it too when he was a student at Columbia Green, right? There's plenty of stuff I don't know, but I know my Hawthorne. After the kings of Great Britain had assumed the right of appointing colonial governors, the measures of the latter seldom met with the ready and general approbation, approval, which had been paid to those of their predecessors under the original charters. Okay, so this is a big moment in American history. Um, Great Britain, so 1732, um, we, uh, this is still a British colony that we're living in here. And the kings are now appointing colonial governors and that is very un-American, right? We believe in elections here, um, and this is a very un-American. And the people, even in 1732, did not want that. They don't want someone appointed. They want to vote. There's already this smell of, of, um, of uh, voting uh, democracy in the air. And, of course, Major Molyneux was appointed, and that's why he gets tarred and feathered. And what's Robin looking to do in town? He's looking to sort of gain, sort of be appointed maybe to something, or at least glom on, glom on to my kinsman Major Molyneux, which had been paid. The people, there's, there's the key sentence to the whole story. The people looked with most jealous scrutiny at the exercise of power, which did not emanate from themselves. Mind if I read that again? The people looked with most jealous scrutiny, so looked very closely, jealous scrutiny, to the exercise of power which did not emanate from themselves. And they usually rewarded their rulers with slender gratitude for the compliances by which in softening their instructions from beyond the sea, etc., etc. So the exercise of power which did not emanate from themselves. So yeah, there's a government thing there, power that emanates from you, you vote. The person who gets the most votes becomes the leader. But also, power that emanates from you, right? Robin is, is not looking to use his own power, he's looking to use the power of his cousin, Major Molyneux. That's not good. It's a good way to get lazy, right? If you haven't earned what you have. Um, so Hawthorne is really making a case here that when you look to the power that emanates from you and not from someone else, it is a good thing. It's good, it's good government, it's good personal. So the personal and the political are very much connected in this story. And this is where we find out in the same paragraph that it's set in 1732, because it says not far from 100 years ago, and we know the story is written in 18, uh, 1832. So the opening paragraph, I hope you've read it uh, at the beginning, of course, and at the end, as I told you to, during our time together the other day. So uh, before we dig further into details, I'm going to uh, end this segment because I try to keep these under 15 minutes. So I will see you for part two of Nathaniel Hawthorne's my kinsman, Major Molyneux.